what's up guys Ryan Landscapes in today's video finally we've got the Camponotus Lajnaperda video where we're moving them into the new setup and um, not sorry we're building the new setup but either way I'm pretty excited to get this video out obviously if you haven't yet join my discord server there's a lot of people in there like-minded people not just ant keepers people who keep inverts any sort of animals it's a big community in there at the moment and you know i feel like if you are to join you will not be disappointed with the amount of people you'll meet and a lot of people there i can now call my friends and um, the other side to it is thank you very much to all my patrons and my members of my channel i couldn't do it without you a lot of the things you see on this video today uh, you can actually buy on my website as well so you may as well drop it in so i don't think i have you anywhere but i now have a store antscapes.co.uk so go and check it out if you haven't and um, i think that that was about it i wanted to mention but either way i hope you like the build and remember if you do and um, no peer pressure at all but you know a sub or a like would go a million miles for me but as always peace and love i'm out Now all I'm doing here is showing how I made the lid. The lid itself, I already had one pre-made on the scorpion setup, as you'll see further through the video. Um, but yeah, my Asian forest scorpion had a lid already pre-made, so I literally just cut around that. All I'm using here is corrugated plastic. I'll cut a 15 centimeter um, hole in the center of the <laughs> actual lid itself, and that'll just sit flush on the lid. But you'll see exactly what I mean in a moment. But yeah, this is going to be the lid. I'll barrier the top around the outside and that'll be enough. As you can see there, it sits on the lid light, uh, nicely. It doesn't sit flush. Always remember they're always symmetrically perfect. So you do have to make some amendments, which I'll show later on. The first thing is just adding in some drainage layer. As you can see here, the drainage layer itself, they come in these two litre bags or these bags that I bag, uh, bag them up in them myself. They are available on the website alongside the tropical soil mix. Now the rocks themselves, they were leopard rock. So you can buy these from aquarium stores, anything like that. They do normally have a good selection of you know unique uh, logs or bogwood, as well as different types of rocks you can use as hardscaping setups. Now the next thing is the drainage layer, just make sure you've got about one centimetre hang on either side of it, that way when you do put the soil in it doesn't just tipple on the sides and it does give you that overhang or that good overhang, either way you can keep it within this a lot easier and all I'm doing here is getting a rough idea on how I want the hardscape to look, so I am wanting to do a slope corner on the left because I will be making a build next week which is sloping from the right of the corner and these two builds kind of work alongside each other or in the same location so anyway that's kind of how it worked out but yeah so we just put two bags of this soil in there uh, this is a 30 centimeter cube so i think the literage is about 25 liters or in that area um but yeah the next thing is adding the dead wood or different pieces of wood. As you can see, there's varied sizes going in, mainly piled into one end. The main thing for me here was also trying to mirror the hardscape I initially put in at first because in my head, I always had it sort of nice and how I wanted it to look. But as you can see, things do change and I will be making some slight amendments to that hardscape. But either way, I think all of the you know larger rocks or the smaller rocks, they complement each other very, very well. It does add a sense of skill. And I think ultimately that's what I am going for. Um, the small patches of moss, that isn't sphagnum moss, if you're wondering. It's actually a forest moss, which uh, come in these sort of sealed up um, pre-made packs from normally reptile centers or Amazon. The only difference is that the forest moss is more uh, green than your typical uh, sphagnum moss so the sphagnum moss is more yellow you can even get it in red and green colors but this one it's more green i've noticed typically um but the hardscape elements i'm putting more rocks in there just adding finer details in between those logs because either way i want it to look aged not like you've just chucked a load of rocks and logs in there i want it to look like it's sort of sat for years and years and it's built up over time I'm adding some brachythechium moss to the log areas or the logs. It'll do really, really well here. Also some pointed feather moss. I think it'll do really, really well in this tank. Um, if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, regardless to me, it's more, more. Um, I guess, I guess the, the plus would be to have the Lajna Perda um, booming and having those perfect 
you know the the image end of the day it's how you make the tanks i know for a fact they will be turned over i know for a fact that the ants themselves will make this into exactly what they want it to be but you know at this stage i think for doing it um for the sake of making it a nice escape why not take your time attention to detail even these smaller things here when you spray it down uh, that's why i always spray it down everything sets in and then you can kind of look over it once more and make sure everything's um in, in place or molded in where it needs to be just giving the glass a nice wipe down and making sure that obviously the humidity is staying within and giving that muscle spray as well but the main thing with this setup is just making sure that all the finer details i get right I'm adding small patches of moss with a few random plants that I found outside that were already attached to the moss. I think those will add character, they'll add detail to the setup. And again, I don't want it to look like I've just added, you know, throw, thrown things in there. It has to look aged. I do list a few of the tropical plants that I add to this. Just remember when you're buying plants or you're adding plants, do your research. Make sure you look at what type of, um, you know, soil they like to be in, light conditions, uh, humidity levels, everything before you physically add that to the setup. But either way, I think these will do really well. Um, and I do hope, I really do hope that the Lies from Perda decide to use that sloped area where the, you know, the, the wood is thick and dense within and they start to nest within the wood. I think that would be super, super cool. But I do list, like I say, a few of the final plants that I add in. One being that uh, the ivy and the begonia, um, sorry, watermelon begonia, the beautiful, beautiful plant. And I think they'll do awesome in here, especially once they start crawling up those branches that are more arboreal. I think the uh, Camponotus will enjoy that as well. They will explore and they will use those to their advantage. Um, I'm not too sure how, whether they use them at vantage points or just for the sake of you know going arboreal. Uh, I'm not too sure, but I hope that they do use them to the full, full advantage. Another spray down, I always make sure that when I initially make setups, I have around an inch or two in the drainage layer. If the drainage layer is only two inches, then you know fill it an inch and a half um, before you start adding things, but let it sit for a couple of weeks. Main reason being is what it's doing there is it will get past an initial molding period. Um, it will set in, like an aquarium, you have to let it set in and let it cycle for a couple of weeks before you start introducing fish or anything, whatever you're adding in there. Um, same concept, as well with me adding so many organics in like different branches also leaf litters uh, mosses etc um, you know i think that this will need to sit for about two or three weeks build itself up all that humidity and water in the drainage layer will then get the moss to attach to that um, soil at the bottom and attach in properly with that high humidity after that you know you can spray it down um every few days just make sure that um you know you, you're missing the moss enough so it survives and lives and keeps um growing throughout the tank i am adding in springtails here so i do add in some aniscus salis as i mentioned earlier before i started rambling um, which are these beautiful beautiful native isopods i also do add in the tropical sp uh, springtails which are the columbola sp I also add in some native millipedes. Again, these, these are available on the store, I'm just saying. But yeah, I add some native, <laughs> native millipedes in the tank. I also add some black white-legged millipedes as well and some worms from my culture as well because I don't really need that many worms in here, probably three to five and they'll breed eventually and you know, they will keep reproducing. But at this stage, it doesn't need a massive amount of worms in there. They will do their own thing and they will start to clean gradually. And I think this was last but not least, a native centipede. These are your typical house centipedes, but this is a little baby I've got at the moment. I am breeding these, and um, I hope in around you know two weeks time, I will have the whole clutch of them available for sale. But I do have one of these in the setup ready. I thought I'd introduce him now, get a little bit more mature within three or four weeks, um, but it will start to dwindle down on the isopod species as they predominantly eat them. All I'm showing here is the sellotape I put on the lid where it doesn't sit flush to the glass because when it's siliconed, what can happen is it can be higher or lower in certain corners of the tank. So I'm just showing how nice it still looks, I guess, with the sellotape on the front of the glass. Um, you can barely see it here um, and you can barely tell at all. I think it's a great thing to use, um, you know, just to corrugate a plastic lid cuts a shape and then you can uh, flew on or barrier the top of that lid and you know tape it down slightly it hasn't compromised anything for me and final result wise with the tape on already i think it looks okay i'm pretty happy with this setup 
I just put that hole in the middle. You can see the sellotape on every single corner because if one side's off, generally you will have to compromise for each other corner. Um, ordinarily, I would tell you to, if you haven't got a lid, to put sellotape on the corners where the silicon seal is and then flew on the sellotape. They can't get out of it. I've used that in many, many of my setups, uh, but all I'll be doing is flu on in this area or putting a barrier on this area. I actually use natural mineral oil and that's all I use, but then the silicon can't be climbed in the OptiWhite tanks. So I am fortunate with this one, but normally on all my other setups, I have to put tape on the silicon at the corners and then flu on this um, tape in the corners so they can't escape. I will end this with a few shots. I hope you liked the video. And remember, if you do like the video, like, subscribe, you know, share it to anyone. That always helps. And leave a comment on what, what, uh, what you want to see next or what you want to see in future videos. Thank you very much again for all my patrons and all the members of the channel. I love you to pieces. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much it from me. But as always, peace and love. I'm out.